All right, welcome back to the course or series here on YouTube. My name is Max. Great job in going through those last two videos. The last video was probably a little bit confusing because I actually messed up a little bit on the class names. I mixed them up a bit, and that's why in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about SCSS and how we can nest our tags. We're then gonna proceed to style this up a little bit more, and then we will be on our way to the next video, which is probably gonna wrap it up. So I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, so great job in going through that last video. This is what we got. Let's go ahead and fix this by adding in a line items center or start in our list. So in layout list, or these three lists here, right? Notice how they're all named class layout is equal to list, layout list. Let's go ahead and let's say align items is start. Sorry, align self is start. Okay, so that will do that. And then if we wanna say align items, we have to go to layout because they because the lists exist within layout. So we can say align items. All align items is doing is it's basically going into its children. So layout list and it's saying align self is start. So we wanna set this to align self is equal to start or align items is equal to start on layout. And then we're given that. Let's go ahead and start moving around our margins and gaps just to see what happens. So on our list card, if we get rid of the margin, you'll see that that happens. And then the reason that gap still exists is because in layout underscore underscore list, we still have a grid gap of 20 pixels. So if we get rid of that, we can no longer see our background. So you can quickly see that we kind of need a mix of the two. We need a grid gap of 10 pixels, and then we also need a margin on each one of the cards or, or uh, tasks here, right? Uh, we need a margin of 10 pixels. You could also up and get rid of the grid gap entirely and just say margin 10 pixels. But then I think it looks a little bit different. I kind of like the grid gap. I'll just give it a grid gap of five pixels. All right, so that's it. Now let's go ahead and give them some border radiuses around our items. You'll notice that in here, everything's a little bit rounded. So let's go ahead and let's go to layout list and let's say corner radius or border radius is 20 pixels. Well, we're gonna do something small like eight pixels or maybe even four pixels. Four pixels is good. Let's copy that. Let's go into card. Let's say four pixels. And then we should be good. All right, so let's go ahead and let's apply some styles now so that it can look a little bit more like this. First thing we need is a margin or a padding rather around all of our stuff. You'll notice that the text on this is a little bit inset, whereas in here, it's kind of touching it. So let's go ahead and in list card, let's just say padding, eight pixels. And then that looks really nice. Okay, now let's style our label and our date so it looks a little bit more like this. So our label looks fine. We might need to change the font size a bit, but our date, we need a smaller font size like 14 pixels or 10 pixels or something. Let's try 12 pixels. And then that looks really nice. Now let's give our date a background color of red. And let's give it a border radius of 16 pixels. Sorry, let's go more with like four pixels. And then let's say that it has a padding of zero pixels and then four pixels. So zero on the top and bottom, and then four on the left and right. Let's then kind of just give it a width of, let's say 40 pixels. Let's make it a little bit bigger, so 50 pixels. And then now that looks really nice. Let's adjust our padding to be two pixels on the bottom and top and then four pixels on the left and right. That looks really nice. Okay, and then now we have to make sure that this color is white so it goes well with the red. And now you can see what we're given there. So this needs to go on all of the dates and you'll notice that it's normally going on one and that's because we've only given class is equal to card date on one of them. So one thing I wanna do is first, Chain, put this class on every card uh, date. So let's go on all the dates and put that class in if it's not there for you already. And you'll see we have it. All right. Some of these are a little bit bigger, like September 15th. So I'll just say September 5th for now so that it fits it. And then you can find a way to adjust that so it looks a little bit more natural. We should also say align, or sorry, text align center. And that should look good. 
All right, so I went a little backwards in this video and I started with the styles, but we still need to think about SCSS here. So let's go ahead and put make one of these green and then let's get into that. So let's say card date and let's just say, let's go into settings and let's say, oh yeah, I already chose it, but basically you wanna go into settings and choose SCSS and then go ahead and, and hit save and close. And then now in card underscore underscore date, we can say and and we can say, let's just say last child. We'll say and, yeah, last child. And we'll just say background is spring green. And you'll see that applied it to all of them. So what we can do is we can actually go into our list card and do that. So we'll say, we'll go into list card and we'll say, and last child. Okay, so it's selecting the last child of each one in the card. So we can just make all the last ones have that. And then we can get rid of this background and we can say dot card underscore underscore label, sorry, date. And then we can put that in there. There you go, looks really nice. Now, it looks a little bit bright. So I don't remember the exact color I used in here, but I'm gonna use lime green. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And that looks a little bit more accurate. All right, so that looks really good. Now that's how you do a little bit of SCSS, not too in depth SCSS, but now you can go around and do stuff like this. You can go into like list card, or you could go like this would work. You could, you see card, how it says card underscore underscore date. If we got rid of that, it's obviously not gonna do anything. It's gonna get rid of our styles. But now since those underscores exist, we can say and underscore underscore, and we could say, what was it? I already forgot, date. We can say and date. And then we can throw that background color in there and it will work. Basically what this ampersand is doing is it's taking card and putting it right there. It's, that's all that ampersand is doing, okay? A little bit more on that. Um, I'll make some videos on it. Just let me know down in the comments if you want that explained more. Again, this is more of a project-based course. I just wanna show you how to build this kind of stuff. Okay, so I wanna add in one more thing before we finish up here. I wanna add in a, mar a margin back to our body and see what that looks like. I'm gonna get rid of that, the margin and padding, and you can see now that it kind of insets it a little bit and it looks a little bit better. The reason I got rid of it at first is just because I don't really like them while I'm developing, but sometimes they make the content look better. All right, so that's it. Um, I guess I'm gonna make one more video on hovers and um, animations. I would do it in this one, but I kind of want to mix it up so the concepts are specific to the video so people can find uh, what they're looking for easier. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the last video in just a second.